Guys, welcome back to another episode of Roadside Reviews. Ha! Surprise! Kia! Another one. Just not any Kia. This is the all-new 2021 Kia Soul. Kia? Seoul, South Korea? I got what they did. Or maybe it's to embody the soul of the youthful generation that buys it to be able to give them a creative outlet to the design that really expresses themselves. That's deep. I don't know, that's for y'all to be able to decide, but this is the all new 2021 Kia Soul in undercover green of all colors. I don't know what's undercover unless you're trying to be able to hide it out in the woods, but trust me, you'll be able to see this car from a mile away. Now the Kia Soul is now been refreshed as of 2020, got some new design cues and you know, you can be able to see that they've got a lot more streamlined shapes and you know, it's kind of hard to be able to label this vehicle. Is it a car? Is it a hatchback? a small compact SUV. I mean, I guess whichever one fits your insurance purposes better would be the one that you'd want to be able to call it, but it kind of fits the, you know, the niche of whatever you're looking for and still has it in a nice package. And the first thing you're gonna see when you look at the front of this car is the front end, obviously, because that's what's facing us right now. But just the overall design of it, I mean, it's really unlike anything else from the Kia line. You can see that you have your halogen lamps sitting right in the center of the front bumpers and not only does it add to that distinctive design cue that you're going to get with the new Kia Soul but also it does serve a purpose as well. Having those down a little bit lower is going to be able to help increase visibility. As far as diffusion from the headlamps it's going to keep a lot of that sitting in front of the vehicle but also maneuvering around during the nighttime, be able to have a little bit of a lower view and a little bit more light right out in front of the car so you're not going to be running over curbs or being able to see down a dimly lit street. You do have LED projector uh, fog lamps located sitting right here, integrated into the front part of the grill, which I think is a cool bit because you don't have it sitting off to the side underneath it. So a little bit of a different place to be able to put it. Don't see it right off the bat, but one of those little things that's kind of like an Easter egg, be able to find it and really kind of appreciate it. Well, you still have all your turn signals and other daytime running lights located right up here on the top of the hood. Now, if you've seen some of our other videos too, we do have the two liter four cylinder engine that is going to come with this vehicle. It is also coupled with an intelligent transmission. Now, there's really no gears in it. And it's the easiest way to be able to explain it is it's based off of pulleys. And one pulley will be able to adjust its ratio, giving you basically an infinite amount of gear ratio. So giving you very brisk and great acceleration when you need it and being able to stay on the power instead of being limited to certain gear ratios. So if you're going from first to second and second to third, you can only go as fast as those gears will allow you to do while then dropping back down the RPMs and building back up the power. This transmission can be able to stay on the power and when you're driving it normally, will then mimic what would be a eight speed automatic transmission, which is gonna be a little bit of a smoother ride, you know, things that people are more comfortable with and know about. So having that little bit of a transmission shift shock, you know, just when it's changing gears, you're gonna be able to get that through the normal part but being able to utilize the power the engine has at all times is gonna be great, especially for a vehicle like this if you're trying to merge onto the freeway or just have a little bit of a sporty run with it too. Coming along over here to the side, for the first time, we don't have one that has a machine finished wheel. The front, these are all gonna be the darker color, which really, really works well with the undercover green on the exterior of this car. All season, all weather tires like before, nice beefy sidewall so it's going to give you that very comfortable ride that you'd expect out of a car or SUV whatever you like to be able to call it and just really helps you know with the overall appearance now having that larger tire fills up the fender wells pretty well and you know between a comfortable ride safety and the appearance really looks good paint to match door mirrors paint to match door handles everything along the side is going to be the same you do have that black trim that long runs along the bottom of it it's again to be able to help kind of give it that accent color like I think if you see in one of our previous videos with the Seltos, kind of the same design there which is going to be, you know, kind of Kia's signature look I guess is what you'd be able to call it. But once again, it fits this vehicle very well. Roof lines can be able to remain flat all the way to where you get to the rear of the vehicle, which now looks like an SUV have the large rear hatch, or if you want to call it a hatchback, with SUV-like storage into the rear. So, just like with the Seltos, a lot of space into the rear, 
not as much as you'd get in a typical SUV just because it has a little bit of a shorter wheelbase, but really anything that you need to be able to cart around, especially if you're just driving around the city or out in the hill country, tons of space to be able to do so. This one does have a cargo cover onto the back, so it'd be able to keep prying eyes out of it. So by simply flipping this back down, when the tailgate is closed, nobody can see what's in the back. Kind of acts like a trunk, giving you a little bit more privacy. This does have the 60-40 split folding seats. We've covered that. Be able to allow for more cargo space into the rear. Underneath, spare tire and a little bit of extra storage. This is a space saver, and as we've gone over before, kind of uh, helps you get your tire change a little bit quicker. You have to worry about running on a spare tire. You know, and then another one goes back out. Space saver is going to help reduce the weight, but then also be able to give you a little bit more space inside the cabin too. But all your jack equipment and tools are located in one spot. Now with Wool Car, remember you do also get that lifetime warranty and lifetime roadside assistance. So the chances of you ever actually having to be able to use that are slim to nil. But if you're doing something with the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts and you need to be able to show how to change a tire, everything's located into the rear. Closing the hatch. Love the design. You can see that it almost encompasses a complete circle from your rear tail lights, reflectors, down through, and it has this nice black finish that kind of tops it off. The Kia logo in the back, EX model, you know, it just really kind of cleans everything up and still has that rugged look that you'd see with the rear bumper being that matted black finish. Helps with durability and the overall appearance of the vehicle. Once again, is it an SUV? Is it a car? Is it a hatchback? It kind of fits all of them and that's really for you to be able to decide. Now, coming over here to the driver's side, pretty typical, like we've seen on all the other cars. If it's going to change, it's going to be the design cues on the inside. A lot different layout than you've seen on our other Kia models that we have. Starting over here with the door. Windows, door locks, mirror controls, yes you have that. Armrest. I like this hold right here, so if you're reaching over and the door's all the way open, you can see that these swing open a lot more, be able to get easy entrance and exit of the vehicle, but you have this nice door handle right here that you can grab onto. Storage down here, water bottles, road maps, anything like that that you would have, but the one thing that I think is really cool that I've seen only on the sole so far is this trim and this design. You know, I, I don't know what to be able to call it, but it's something that's really unique and different and ties in with the overall styling of the Kia Soul. And once again, when we get into the interior, you're gonna see some things that are gonna be a lot different, but a lot of the same proprietary uh, equipment, such as your onboard computers and you know, speedometers and gauges. So let's go ahead and take a look at all that. Push button start ignition, just like with the rest of the keys we talked about, you have your lock, unlock, you have your trunk release, panic button, and this does have the remote start as well. Simply put your foot on the brake, and you notice there's no button up here to be able to press and start the car. It's actually located right down here by the shifter. Pretty cool, nice little spot to be able to put it, changes things up. Press it once, now the vehicle starts up. It being November, it is hot outside, so let's get some air conditioning going first. Very different, but a lot of the same stuff. Like I said, you know, your proprietary equipment, such as your onboard computers and navigations and, you know, air conditioning is gonna be a lot of the same, but the layout and, you know, the overall design of it's what's gonna change. Uh, starting with your gauge clusters, a lot of the same, engine RPMs, speedometer, fuel gauge, temperature, how far you can drive before it's time to refuel, you know, what temperature it is outside, all that's going to be able to remain the same. Windshield wipers, blinkers. The cool thing I like about this is now they've changed the uh, controls as far as how everything operates and you know they're still in the same spot meaning you have your Bluetooth hands-free phone system, all your radio controls on the left side cruise control and all your onboard computer equipment is going to be on the right. But I like these little circle dials because it ties in with the center of the steering wheel, keeping that nice circular design. And with this piano black matte finish on top of it, really adds a good look to it as well. But everything's super easy to be able to get to, everything's super visible. You know, even like I said, the coloration of the gauges, you know, going to a lighter white and a little bit of a deeper red help reduce, you know, fatigue while driving, you know, just the overall you know, if you're driving a, like a long distance, you know, at nighttime, you know, you're not going to be squinting and having to stare at that or getting that constant eye strain, which is nice as well. Over here by my left knee, all your nanny state controls. So you have your lane keep, you can be able to turn that on and off, blind spot monitoring as well. This vehicle does have the auto turn off. So if you're at a stoplight to be able to help save fuel, it will turn off the vehicle momentarily, then restart when your foot is released from the brake. You have the ability to turn that on and off. 
This one does have a sunroof, manual shade, power sunroof as well, snappy in the way it moves. You have a little vent if you look up, up on top here too, which is going to go up and down. That's just to prevent any air from coming in. So if you have a really expensive hair cut that you just got done or you're going to a special event, you have to worry about that screwing that up as well. But also just kind of keeps the, the, the uh, exterior noise down to a minimum while you're driving. So that's going to come along with the sunroof, which is if you've ever opened up a sunroof that doesn't have it, it sounds like you're going through a wind tunnel. That's going to cut it down dramatically. And just like with a lot of the other power sunroofs as well, you do have a venting feature. So if it's a hot day and you want to be able to make sure that you keep a lot of the hot air out, you can be able to vent from the top. So when you get into a car, it's not going to be as hot. Keep in mind, this one does have the auto start. So you can be able to start the vehicle remotely and have the air conditioner cool it down. That's just going to be able to help cool it down a little bit quicker. Auto dimming rear view mirror. Once again, someone's got their brights on or lifted up truck behind you. It'll automatically dim down so you're not blinded by the lights from there. Along with your SOS and UVO controls, everything's going to be within fingertips reach there to be able to use those. And then getting down to the display and the layout. This is where it's going to change a lot from the other Kias. Really cool looking AC vents over off to the side. You know, very futuristic. I don't want to say almost, you know, you know, like it's from a spaceship or something like that. But still, good look design. Very, you know, futuristic looking, I guess is the best way to be able to put it. But you have four of them, two on top of your uh, navigation screen. And just like what we've seen with the other ones too, you have three different interfaces that you can use. So this one's set with the navigation, all of your media in connect, and then of course any weather information or outside temperature display is what we have on this one. Touchscreen capability, very snappy. And the big thing with keys that you see in um, some of our sister brands like the Hondas, a very large navigation screen, but you can see how quickly everything responds. So very snappy, not a lot of lag time, very easy to be able to control. And of course, going through different menus to be able to decide what you want to look at. Radio knobs, love them. Volume control, power, be able to go ahead and scroll through any of your other information here or zoom in and out from the map. You can be able to do that with the knob as well. Underneath, you can be able to go to your quick menu. So if you want to go straight to your navigation, points of interest, be able to cancel a route, or if you already have one stored inside there, you can be able to find it. When you go to your uh, points of interest, if you're trying to find a gas station, ATM, restaurant, of course, you can be able to pull that up looking for a coffee shop boom it's going to be able to pull up a list of everyone close to us and be able to then give you turn by turn directions so just depending on how far you want to drive or if there's one that you you know in particularly want to be able to go to now this little start button is pretty cool because you can program a certain command to that so if there's one thing you want to be able to pull up with the navigation system you can be able to hit that and it'll automatically go to it instead of having to go through any of your other sub menus and then your radio media controls and then set up for display and brightness, sound, tone, fade, bounce, all that other fun things. Hazard lights, located right in the center, easy enough to be able to find. And this one does have the dual automatic climate control. So driver, passenger, AC, pretty typical. Be able to hit the auto, it takes care of you know how fast the air is coming out, then the direction or where it's coming out from the vents up on top or down lower if the heater is going but you can still be able to take over manual controls right here with fan and then where the air is going from there. This one does have your 12 volt power outlet, USB plug-in as well, and wireless phone charging too, which is gonna be nice. So just set your phone inside there and it'll automatically be able to charge right here up on this top deck. Shifter is gonna be like a lot, uh, it's gonna be very actually similar to the one that we saw in the Seltos, which was on a previous episode of ours. So from park, reverse, neutral drive, pretty typical. Go over into a sport mode, that's where that intelligent transmission will then be able to take over, keep it into a higher RPM range so you can drive the vehicle, you know, a little bit more sporty, have a little bit more response to it. And then you have the ability to then to be able to take manual control of the transmission, upshifting and downshifting, just on your preference. If you're going down a windy road or, you know, just want to feel a little bit more sporty, you have the ability to do that. These don't have three stage heated seats, but only two, but still in South Texas is a nice feature to be able to have. And then now your drive mode selector. So, you have a sport mode and a normal mode. And once again, that's gonna take over throttle response, steering, and then also your transmission. So it's gonna keep it in the higher RPMs. It's gonna keep it in the power band where it may not be as fuel efficient, but also give you a little bit more pep and a little bit more response. So it's just not gonna be a typical car to be able to drive. Once again, manual parking brake. I'm a big fan of those. I like those instead of the electronic ones or the ones down here on the pedal. So it feels like the old school cars, you know, kind of reminiscent of that. Cup holders, two of them located right here, along with the thermos holders you have in the front doors. And then 
a pretty decent sized storage compartment for a car. Now on top of that, you do have a glove box as well to be able to hold anything like your owner's manuals or anything else that you would need, but you know, still large enough to be able to fit maybe let's say like an iPad mini or sunglasses, whatever it may be, you know, still keep it out of sight, grab it when you need it, be able to use it from there. Now this does have the cloth trim seats. You can see that it does have the white stitching, which adds a really nice appeal to it. But I like this two-tone, and it's a little bit of a different feel. So you have a nice softer, kind of smoother, and then this textured part is nice. A, because you don't want to be sliding around if you're going around corners. But then B, it's just going to kind of keep you firmly planted, but really a lot of it is just the way that it looks. It's going to be different. So having that two-tone look along with the whole design of the interior of the car, I think really kind of helps set that off. So it's subtle little things like that is what separates the soul from a lot of the other cars in this segment or SUVs, uh, just depending on how you look at it, which really adds a nice touch to it. But as far as the layout of the controls, everything is very simple and easy to use. A lot of great equipment in a car at a very affordable price point as well. Now, like we do all the time, let's take a look at the back. First thing I noticed when I'm sitting back here is the stadium style seating. So being a smaller vehicle, you are going to have a little bit of a shorter wheelbase. And the one thing that you have to take into, you know, uh, take into consideration is that you lose a little bit of leg room. Now by setting the seat a couple inches taller than the front seats, we'll be able to provide a little bit more leg room by lifting the seat up, which, you know, helps out pretty well. So if the seat's all the way into the back here, even a person my size, you know, it's not cramped but I can still be able to fit back here just fine. But being six foot three, if there's somebody my size driving back here, not the best place to be in, but still tons of space as well. Storage compartments galore located back here, power outlets as well. Like I said, tons of headroom, which is big. You know, you still have that cool design features that you saw on the front doors following through with the rears. And of course, you know, nice little soft pad right here on the side for my arm. And then if you pull down the center console, get this guy out of here oh yeah two more cup holders along with the thermos holders that you have in the doors so it makes for a pretty comfortable space to be now I wouldn't want to be back here like let's say on a longer road trip you know just because of the amount of space and my size but just running around town you know, you know this is perfectly adequate and especially like I said if you have smaller children back here people under six foot you know there'd be no complaints whatsoever like I said, having this raised stadium style seating into the rear really helps keep that compact design, allows for better maneuverability too. So if you're trying to get into a tighter parking spot without having to sacrifice the leg room in the rear too, which is nice. And even though that they have the rear seats raised up just a couple inches, still tons of headroom. So whether you have a tall person sitting in the back or if you're carrying kind of a large load if the seats are down, you don't have to worry about hitting the top. So a lot of versatility in, you know, in a vehicle like this which is why it's kind of hard to be able to label it one, one particular thing. But you know, overall, I'm digging it. It's pretty comfortable back here. I like it. So Kia Soul from Seoul, South Korea, or does it embody the soul of the younger youthful group of people that want to have an expressive outlet for their automobile that fits their lifestyle? Well, that's really open for interpretation and for you to be able to decide. But the one thing I can be able to say is between the styling, this undercover green and everything this vehicle has to offer, it is really kind of in a league of its own. You know, they've done a great job with the redesign, kind of capturing the futuristic view. There's not a lot of cars out here that look like this, and especially ones at this price point that give you as many options that you're gonna be able to see out in the marketplace. Is it a hatchback? Is it a car? Is it an SUV? Once again, it can be all three, just depending on what you're looking for. But like I said, the best way to come out and be able to see for yourself is schedule a test drive get behind the wheel, you know, you decide what you want it to be and see if it's something that's going to fit your lifestyle. And once again, my name is John Siebers with Roadside Reviews. You know, we're going to see a lot more of these coming out as we are increasing the amount of cars that we are recording. If you like what you're seeing, make sure that you go ahead, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell. So every time that we release a video, you'll be notified about it. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below like to be able to read those and if there's a special vehicle or something you want to be able to know about obviously we can then make a future video about that uh, my name's john with wool car kia signing off and thank you again for watching